Okay, so uh, we left off in the previous video where we had um, mapped out our cDNA. And so we've got this uh, chunk that we're going to cut out that's uh, 74 base pairs from ECHO to PVU2. And then from PVU2 to SAC1 is 4,439. Now we're splicing that into a uh, P blue script factor. And as I said in the previous one, we want that ECHO site to be lower than the SAC1 site in, new, in number because we want to load this thing in counterclockwise so that it's actually in line with the LAC-Z. As you may or may not recall, LAC-Z is going counterclockwise, but our numbering is going clockwise. So let's think about this. If I had uh, ECHO R1 going here and SAC1 going there, then when we put that gene in, that CFTR gene that I want to do the research, it's going in the opposite direction as the LAC-Z gene. So that's incorrect. All right. So what we want to do is use the, the plasmid, the P blue script plasmid, that's going to be the reverse of that. So in order to do that, we have to test it out. So what we're looking for is that SAC1, which is the three prime end of the gene, is actually going to be the first numerically. And echo 01091 is going to be second. It's going to have a higher number. All right. The other thing we're going to be mapping is the uh, um, fingerprint enzymes for this plasmid. All right. And so that's that's my target. All right. Um, now it's interesting. Mine just happens to be two sites, so I'm going to have a, th a three cutter, and that's fine. No big deal. Okay. So let's take a look at how we do this. We're looking at P blue script KS or SK, and as you may may not recall KS, and this is on your sheet, is 58061, and, and SK is 58062. All right, so let's take a look. So again, we're looking for the one that has S, then E. Okay, and that's going to put our plasmid in line with LAXE, so that it actually gets, or not our plasmid in line with LAXE, but our, our um, gene of interest in line with LAXE, which will get it expressed properly. Otherwise, we would put it in backwards, and um, translation, trans transcription, translation would still work, but the outcome would be not be the protein that we had encoded. All right. Uh, so we'll go back here, get our handy dandy neb cutter out. Okay, and what I recommend is you actually copy that and have two inst instances going just side by side for the heck of it. Okay, so we're going to put in the code for uh, P blue script. KS58061, and you'll see it there with all the crazy number of enzymes. They'll just preload in, and we're going to do a custom digest using the enzymes that we're using for splicing. So that's my ECHO 0109 one. I'm just going to say ECHO for short. It's easier. Uh, and SAC1. And PVU2. Yes. There you are. And SAC1. Okay. Digest. Okay, so there it is. This, this is, I actually lucked out. So we know then that I need to use P blue script KS because we said that we wanted to have echo lower than SAC1. So that's going to put my, my gene of interest in line with this gene, which is LAXE. Okay, so uh, and there's PVU2. So I've got a 529 and a 977. Now, if you have more than one of these, you'll have to list those in your table. I'll show you how to do that shortly. Okay. Uh, so what are we at here? 749 for that and 657. Okay, and that's SAC 1 there. Okay, PVU cut sites. I've got, I've got more than uh, one there. So let's go back. 529, 977. Okay. Some of you might have that. Um, I think one does, has the PVU, so you'll have to watch for that. Um, and then you'll also have to watch if you have more than one cut uh, of the restriction of the fingerprint uh, enzyme inside of your gene of interest. I don't think there's anyone that has that, but you might. Okay. And if you do, that's fine. Then just add them in. No big deal. Okay, so let's map this out. Um, let me just grab this guy here. We'll just paste it. 
there over top of all that. It's just easier to see. Eesh. Or not. Ah, I'll just delete all this stuff. Excuse the awkwardness, but whatever. Why should they be different? Let's erase. Erase and paste. Here we go. Okay, uh, paste, there it is. Okay, so let's drop that down. So you, obviously on your sheet, it's a bit lower. Okay, so we had a PVU2 up here at 529. We had one down low, low, low. PVU2 at 977. We've got echo. Now notice again, it's not. I'm not putting it exactly to scale, just approximate locations. You have to have space to write in your your numbers and such, okay? So echo, 01091 at 749. SAC, one at 657. Okay, now recall the edge that the neb cutter gives us. It saves us from having to do a little bit of math, okay? Click on fragments, there they are. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, do a screenshot of that. Capture those fragments with apologies for the loud camera noise. There it is. Okay. Send a clipboard. Oh, sorry. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, I guess that will work. I will paste. There it is. Okay. So this is just, I'm going to put this up here temporarily. Okay. So PVU to SAC 1. So this one's going to be 128. Now, it's tight, right? To, to write it in there, it's going to be a little bit squished. If, if you find that to be the case for yours, that's, you can just write it sideways. It kind of almost doesn't matter. Okay, but on your recombinant, I would prefer to have them in. I think, I think the, uh, the lines are wide enough, but for this one, it was a bit tight. So if you want to just do it that way. SAC12 Echo is 92 base pairs. So that's the chunk that's going to get taken out. And we're going to splice in our piece. And then echo to PVU2 is 228. PVU2 to PVU2 is this beast, which is 2513. Now, uh, what I would like you to do is actually highlight that and use a different color. Uh, I'll just use blue for the heck of it. To highlight what part you're keeping. Right? You're gonna want these fragment maps. So just go like that. Okay. Just to show me that you know what part we're keeping. So the part that's not been colored in is the part that's going to be excised out and uh, we're going to pop in our fragment with that. Okay, a couple other things we got to make sure of to remind. Fill in which um, plasmid you're using. So I'm using KS here, so I also want to put a check mark in my little box up here and say that we're using KS. All right, and that's that for that piece. Now, you're gonna use these principles, uh, or these maps, in order to generate your recombinant map. And remember with your recombinant map that nucleotide number one will be at the 12 o'clock position. So you have to organize it spatially and, and, and space these things out um, according to the kind of the percentage size that they take up of the plasmid so that it, it looks accurate. And then again, you don't have to be so precise. Uh, you know, just estimate and uh, you'll have a, a, an accurate and uh, well laid out and drawn out map. Or again, also remember that you're going to have to adjust uh, downstream sites. Okay, so for example, after we do our splicing, these two locations are going to change, right? Because I'm going to be squeezing my gene of interest into this space and it's a lot bigger than 92. So it's kind of like whatever that is plus whatever this, not that one, sorry, plus whatever Hold on. <laughs> it's whatever, so to figure out this one, it's this plus that fragment will give you that size, okay? Then plus 228 will take you to there. So these numbers are gonna change, okay? But these numbers, these two guys that are upstream of that insertion, that splicing in will stay the same. Okay, so anybody downstream, is gonna, is gonna change. And that applies as well for the fragment locations, the enzyme locations inside for your fingerprint enzyme. 
that's inside of the enzyme or the fragment that you're going to be cutting. So remember to watch for that when you're doing your final recombination map. Okay? I won't be doing a video tutorial on that because we've done two lessons in class plus the other assignment um, on the, uh, the cosmic blue gene splicing. Okay, So use those same exact principles to get your final recombinant. But I just wanted to walk you through the how-tos for when we're using the NEB cutter for a real gene and a real uh, plasmid vector to do a real plasmid map. And just know that once you've got this done, if you ever walked into a lab, you would now know how to actually design a recombinant um, plasmid, and they would just have to teach you the wet work. But you could actually do this in real life, which is pretty cool. So you're walking out of this, co this uh, course with some actual biotech training that is critical to lab. And in the lab, you have to do all this stuff on paper, have it perfectly mapped out before you ever touch the bench. Okay? It's critical that you know what you're getting into ahead of time. So everything that we're doing for this would be the prep work for a real graduate level project.